Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I'm Javier Perez, you may know me as JP2, and on today's episode I'm gonna give you a tour of the Fortress of Sounditude. Okay, so first of all, let's start with the name. The Fortress of Sounditude is... Um, if you know anything about comic books, superheroes, it's a play on words from the Fortress of Solitude, which is Superman's uh, headquarters, like his secret uh, lair. And uh, always been a huge Superman fan since I was little, my favorite superhero of all time. And uh, I think I had that name picked for what this room was going to be years before I even envisioned the room itself. Even when uh, I started this channel a few years ago, I called that room the Fortress of Sounditude. It, it, it was what this was going to be, but it was never this. This is something completely different. This is the, what I like to call, this is the stage one of my long-term goal. So this room is, is 100% me. This is something that needed to work at a bunch of different levels. It needed to work as a room for me to record music. It needed to work as a room for me to record video. It needed to work for me as a room to have friends over and hang out. And it also needed to fit into a home. I went back and forth on it uh, like a lot and I didn't want a separate building or something separate from my main house in Florida that, that now that we moved here, that that would just keep me isolated from. I wanted to be able to just come and go as I please from the room that would keep the creative juices flowing, would help me with my breaks, etc. So this is why this room was picked. Well, some specifications of uh, the room. The room is a little bit over 10 by 11. It's a 10 foot ceilings. And uh, here on my left, it used to be the closet. Let me start with that. I wanted to have a dedicated space for singing or for perhaps like some live amps, stuff like that. The closet seemed perfect. I didn't want to like lose the storage that comes with it that's why i decided to just do the main part in the middle and do that all the insulation on that and still be able to have the sides to store some things to store some extra guitars etc and i was able to achieve it the LED lights that came out of inspiration from um, our other facility in town for Indian River Music Company. Uh, Jason did a really cool job putting the LED lights all over the room. It's like, hmm, I think I want that. <laughs> so, so yeah, that that was uh, one thing that was a uh, must-have in this room, and it actually was probably one of the simplest things to like do. So, as far as the gear goes, uh, let me just start with the desk. Uh, found this desk on Amazon. I'm pretty sure you've seen it on uh, some other videos. There's like five or six different companies that make it pretty well priced. I want to say that you can find it any day between $350 to $500 uh, depending uh, like who you're buying it from. It checked a lot of boxes for me. It had the tray for the keyboard, the MIDI controller, that was a must. It elevated the monitors to ear level. That was also another must. And it had rack space for the three things that I was going to start with, plus room for more. Uh, each side can hold four uh, single units. At the moment, I have three things. So first thing is a radio power conditioner and surge protector. Uh, it was a recommendation by uh, one of my friends, Oscar. Uh, love it plenty of uh, different uh, inputs for power. I, I still have only use only half the unit. Uh, single space in very well priced. So the second thing would be the ART TPS2 preamp. 
It's also single space, uh, mostly vocal preamp. We have one of these in our facility, in our other facility for Indian River Music Company, and it is fantastic. I just not just for vocals, for but for acoustic guitars. It just the tubes it are just beautiful, amazing sound you can get out of it. And um, as soon as I tried it and heard it and like our other facility, I was like, yeah, there's no way I'm not getting this. This is going in the studio. And then the heart of the studio would be the Presonus 1824C. Uh, I've been a fan of Presonus for a few years now. I got my first Presonus unit uh, back in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. It came with Studio One. Studio One, the learning curve was so minimal. It got me going super fast and I was able to enjoy it. I enjoy the sound that I get from their preamps. So it was kind of a no brainer, like just staying within that family and just moving on to like the next big unit. The monitors, they're uh, Mackie's five inch uh, drivers. I actually had these in Virginia. This is just coming over from my previous setup. It's a, something that even if I end up upgrading to something else in the next year or so, I, I will still keep these uh, as a second reference. I love the sound. Everything that I have recorded so far has been through these speakers and I just, I love them. My acoustic panels, uh, so the panels on the walls, they're made by Acoustimac. They're actually not your like like wider channel. I wanted something that was like half the size of what's normally out there because it's, it's a small room. I didn't want to just cover the walls with the paneling and then have no space for anything else, but I still wanted something that was going to be effective in helping me with reverberations and helping me with just sound absorption, etc. And these have done a fantastic job. They look great, they're very sturdy, they were pretty easy to mount, they came with the French cleat set. Uh, very happy with them. So then the bass straps are made by a company called Evenreach. Uh, I also found it on Amazon. I was actually just trying to get just the foam, regular just simple foam corner traps, but then when I saw these and I saw the price and it was solid wood construction, uh, there, there's, there was just no, it was a no-brainer also. It's like, well, for the price, I'm getting a long-term solution versus something until I try to either come up with something or whatever. And uh, these are these are really cool. So as far as most of the other stuff, I'm carrying a lot of the extras over from my previous setup in Virginia. Uh, my microphones, my cables, all of that. It's just the same thing that I was using in Virginia when you guys were watching me in this channel. Uh, that's, you know, you, your studio never stops growing. So phase two will be analyze what, what I've had for a while that either isn't working or should be upgraded. Maybe microphones will be in it. Maybe cables will be in it. But for right now, like, as it works, it's fine. So I have all the stuff now, I have this room, what do I do with it? For starters, I have a series of cover songs that I'm working on and I will be releasing. Some of them are gonna be 100% me, some of them are going to be collaborations. Uh, I wanna change my format for You Oughta Know and bring people here and do the interviews here. Maybe even go live on some of the interviews. I feel like the, the room kind of lent itself for it. it. It was part of my vision to have somewhere that I could do more than just film myself. It, it gets boring after a while. <laughs> and of course, I'm going to keep uh, recording me and recording you. If you want to come and record here, hey, just you know, send me a, send me a message, we'll figure it out. So yeah, that's a quick tour of the Fortress of Sounditude, aka my little piece of heaven on Earth. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming out of this room. So until the next time. <laughs>